بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Traveling is an important aspect for a believer and that's why we have to follow Sunnah in every aspect. The system of the world, what we apparently understand, but in reality, we do not. The unseen systems of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam has taught us the different methodologies a sahabi came to Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, Ya Rasulullah, inni uridu safran. So sahaba had this desire that everything they did, how can it be in conformance to the way and pattern of the Nabi of Allah? So please give me some provisions, give me some advice, tell me what needs to be done. So anything that we do with istikhara, mashwara, going to the ulama, learning about deen, that should be our priority. Besides the worldly system, the, the Dini systems needs to be implant, uh, implemented. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam advised the Sabi, Zawadakallahu taqwa. If you're asking for provisions, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your provisions taqwa. So if we look at the ayat and the Quran and all the promises that are based on a person being a muttaqi, then just making taqwa your provision is the best of provisions. For dunya and akhirah. So the Sahabi said, Zidni ya Rasulullah, give me more advice. Wa ghafara dhambak. May Allah subhanahu wa forgive your sins. So in during journey, the first challenge is a person will commit guna, he will go to different lands, see different forms of women, different forms of sin, different forms of engagements which may distract him from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing he needs is taqwa. And he might falter or flaw. May Allah forgive you. So you are traveling for a need or for spreading deen and you may falter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. Zidni ya Rasulullah, please give me some more advice. Wa yassara laka al khair haythuma kunta. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So travel is not as easy as it seems in today's times, even though it is easy, there are many challenges. So a person needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his journey easy. You may have your own private jet, you may have the best passport and all the wealth on earth, but if Allah wants to make it difficult, then in the sky with one bolt of lightning, that may be the last journey of a person. Likewise, different difficulties and hardships can come to a person, so we need to draw the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So travel is important and who you travel with is also important, drawing the help of Allah and then having good companions. They say there's only one thing more precious than time, it is who you spend it on. So this time is an amana, but what, what are we using this time on? Are we building our worldly commodities or human resources? So a person should know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, otherwise people will take advantage. Whether we are at home or traveling, the world and the people around there, very few are there for your own benefit. More to exploit you, more to usurp your wealth, more to scam a person. So a person traveling needs to be very smart, very thrifty, very vigilant, very aware as well. And make sure he doesn't get caught by the different forms of deceptions. Likewise at home as well. A prepper is a prepper for dunya and akhirah as well. So there was a person who was a traveler and uh, he glorified his possessions and it came to the notice of the king and he had a very rare turban with certain decoration. So the king seen it and said, your turban looks very beautiful, mashallah. Where did you get this turban? What does it cost? So the person said, this is a very expensive turban, oh king. I, I, I prefer not to mention it to you because I, I, I don't want to intimidate you. You are the king and I should be humble in your court. 
So the king insists, so should I spend thousands of gold coins to get this turban? So the minister who seen this person, seen this person is an opportunist. So he went to the king's ear and whispered, be careful, this turban does not be worth even five gold coins. Forget what he is claiming to be. The traveler noticed that the minister is whispering something in the king's ear. So as soon as the minister left, then the traveler said, Oh king, give me permission to leave. I, I, I traveled extensively on earth and, and I was told that there's only one king and your name came up randomly that will afford the turban. That's one of the reasons why I needed to come in this kingdom because I wanted to see a king who could own or pay for a turban of such value. So uh, the king thought about it and he said, you know what king, uh, I have high hopes of you and no one as great as a king like your status and stature could buy this turban. So, uh, but if I'm mistaken, I'll, I'll, I'll carry, carry on on my journey and, and find the right one. So when the king heard this, he ordered his servant to bring 2,000 gold coins and buy the turban. The minister was surprised when he seen the deal gone through. After the deal was done, the minister was leaving the court. The traveler went to him and said, you may know the price of the turban, but I know the weakness of the king. You may know the price of the turban, but I know the weakness of the king. So people are there to exploit you. People are there to, to abuse you. No matter what situation you are in, you could be down. You could be on your lowest. Somebody will come and, and rob you again. You, you could be on the worst of worst and think so that this person is going to help me, but he ends up doing you down even worse. Like there was a story of a millionaire was driving with his limousine. When you saw an ordinary person on the roadside eating grass, so he ordered his driver, stop, stop, stop. He wound down the window, called the man, why are you eating grass, sir? He said, we don't have money for food, we survive on grass. That's, that's, that's what we can manage just to love. So uh, millionaire invited, said, come with me then. So the person said, but sir, I have a wife, I have, I have, I have two sisters, I've got six children. He said, don't worry, bring them all along. So obviously it was a limousine, so the man climbed in with his family into the limo. And he said, sir, you're too kind. How can I ever thank you for all that you've done to us, offering us a new home? So the millionaire said, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. The grass at my home is four feet high. No lawn mower will cut it. No lawn mower will cut it. That's your lunch. That's your lunch. So, so don't overestimate. You have to think good of people, but in 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 real time, what what preparations, what methodologies, what we need to run through, and 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 consider the situation. Then we have to we have to be very very vigilant as well. So Allah subhanahu wa in today's times has made travel very easy, a thousand times probably more easier than ever in the history of the world. So either this ni'mah and bounty will be used to spread the deen of Allah, to revive deen on earth. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. So it will be used or abuse. A person will travel on earth, different countries to commit different gunas. So we should understand this bounty and use it well, for if a person abuses it, he can lose a lot. وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا قُرًا Allah subhanahu wa speaks about uh, the trade of the people of Saba, Siru Fiha. And Allah tells us about the blessings and, and the luxuries and the numerous provisions which Allah had given them the secure dwellings, the many crops and fruits. And they were so much gifted by Allah that when they traveled, they didn't need to carry provisions or water with them. Wherever they stopped, they would find water and fruits. And uh, they would take their rest as well. They could stay over in another. 
and all their needs were provided for. They wouldn't need to take anything with them. And that's literally in today's times, where in the olden days, if you look at travel, you had to take provisions for a month, you had to take provisions and on a conveyance, a horse, a camel, different forms of difficulties, no pit stops. Now, when you are traveling from the airport before you depart to the lounge inside, we've got all the privileges, platinum, gold, silver, different criteria people have, the, the amenities inside the airport. Then on the flight, whether you're traveling first business or even economy, we are endowed with bounties beyond comprehension. And when you arrive, so all the needs of man is, is at his free will. So this is a great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is speaking here, and this is a great lesson for us. So, uh, Allama Mujahid, Sayyid bin Jubair, Qatada, the town of Syria, from Yemen to Syria, they should travel. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them so much bounties that uh, Allah made the stages of them traveling very, very easy and uh, very safely as well. So Qatar has mentioned, يَخَافُونَ ظُلْمَ وَلَا جُوَعَ It wasn't any concern for them about robbery, theft, crime, hungerness. They, they, they were brimming with uh, so much produce that a lady would be able to walk with an empty basket and when she would reach the end of the field, it would be laden and brimming with produce and the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, travel is a na'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should decide how we want to use it or abuse it. Siru fiha. So, they were aminin. Siru fil arfandhuru kayfa kana aqibatu alladheena min qabl. Travel on the earth. Take lesson. Travel should be getting us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not further away from Allah. Unfortunately, nowadays, most of the travels, illa mashallah, even up to the Haram and the Baytullah, person is making tawaf and he says, mashallah, look at all these Mubarak faces from different countries. So he's making khianat of the eyes in front of the Baytullah. He says, look at the Qudrat and, and, and the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a'uzu billah. So he's justifying, he's looking at the Namahram female, in front of the Kaaba and he's saying Subhanallah and she's making dua and says Subhanallah Allahu Akbar So we should take lessons Siru fil arfandhru kayfa bada al khalq How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the world how the creation was originated So you find Allah in our travel Thumma anzhru kayfa kana aqibatu al mukadhibin What was the punishment? Travel and see what azab came فَسِيحُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَةَ أَشْهُرٌ The mushrikeen were given four months to take lesson. So Jamaats go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala four months to take lesson, to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to make sure we don't breach this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person will travel, what are the sunnat adab of, of traveling? The expedition of Tabuk took place on a Thursday, in Nabi Islam dispatched armies on a Thursday, Ajul Wada was on a Thursday. So a person should travel on a Thursday. Other days are permissible, but to make amal on the sunnah. After Fajr is sunnah. The barakat of this ummah is in the early part of the morning. Likewise, at night, the, the earth falls. So a person should travel also at night. Then a person before traveling should read two rakats or four rakats of safar. Also make a niyat of istikhara. إِذَا وَجَدْتَ نِيَا لِسَّفَرْ Then uh, a person should read istikhara. When a person reads istikhara, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must put all goodness in this journey. Then a person, when they are leaving, we should make dua fi hifzila wa kana fi. May you be in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To read this dua is masnoon. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, when he traveled, suffer and hadar, carried certain items which was always on him. Whether it was a mara, kolaram, surma, comb, hay oil, miswak, a small stick. So EDC every day carry items what you'll need for suffer all the needs, all the zaruriyat. We should carry that with as well as making sure that all the sunnah items that we don't breach any sunnah as well. Likewise, 
a person when they reach their destination they take uh, offload their luggage then make a circle around it and uh, read this dua the rewrite was Uthman radiallahu Allahu Rabbi la sharika la Ya Allah Allah Rabbi la ushriku bi shay'a Put a circle around it That will be a means of protection for your goods and your commodities Likewise calling out the adhan and iqama Many people are negligent when it comes to salah as well Even the place we go to Calling the adhan there may be a lot of These, these hotels, these places of residence etc Have uh, jinnat that are residing there Because many a time they are quite empty and do not thrive on these places here. So to give the adhan in iqama will protect a person as well. And uh, not to compromise on our ibadah to, to an extent when Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam performed his tajjud salah on his conveyance. So never compromise. Some people understand that it's journey and, 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 and we make salam of deen. No. That will be only when, when a person does not have the time and, and, and the journey does not allow it. Likewise, when you return home as well, to return earlier, not very late at night, where you will cause the family inconvenience. Obviously, in today's times, we've got technology, we can notify them and they could be waiting for us, etc. So, so that's, that's not a problem. Then to take gifts for the family, Sunnah Alama Munawiyah said it's mustab for the wife, the children, the servants as, as well, to buy hadaya and gifts. Then even while journey, you stop in transit, etc. So a person should... Uh, Read the two rakat salah when you return home, then to make musafaha. So when a person returns from a journey, musafaha is in uh, mu'anaka. So musafaha, the shaking of the hands, and when a person grabs a hold of a person and, and hugs a person, that's where it is from a journey. Musafaha is when you just meet a person. So returning from a journey in the sunnah is mu'anaka. Then go first to the masjid, read to rakat salah, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then if you want to go to somebody that's close to you before going home, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, when he left, the last person he would meet was Fatima radiallahu anha. And the first person he would meet was her as well. Likewise, you may lose something, you may go through difficulty. So you need to draw the help in one riwayah. Allah has servants which we cannot see. So you should say, Ya ibadallah a'inuni O oh, servants of Allah, O oh, friends of Allah, help me. So they are unseen, friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we can draw their help as well. Then when leaving the home, the du'as, Bismillah, tawakkal to Allah, Allahumma inni awdbika and adila, etc. Those du'as when brought in the conveyance, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, sakhara lana hadha. اللهم إنا نسألك في سفرنا هذا البر والتقوى ومن العمل ما ترضى أزد ابن عباس رضي الله عنه مزر وعيد وما قدر الله حق قدره as well as reading بسم الله and the five surahs إذا جاء نصر الله قل يا أيها الكافرون سورة إخلاص فلك الناس and uh, when you bid farewell as well, astaudiyukum Allah alladhi la tadi'u wa da'iu, I command Allah in, 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 in looking after the stress. So I put in you in Allah's protection. Astaudiyu Allah deenak wa amanatak wa khawatima amalak. Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriya, barakat in the early part of the morning. Alaykum biddulja fi in al arda tutwa bilayl, the earth, it, it constricts during the evening as well. So there's a lot of baraka as well uh, in the night time of travel uh, unlike the daytime, which it takes much more longer as well. So all the masnoon adiyya when returning home aibun taibun abidun li rabbina hamidun we should try to go to the ulama and, and try to, to learn all these uh, ad'iyya a lot of khair and baraka bismillahi majreha wa mursaha when you are on a shop or when you're crossing a bridge and there's water out there as well. So important you go onto a height when the plane takes off as well. Allahu Akbar and Subhanallah when land in your flight. Likewise, when you climb up, go downstairs, escalators. So we should be cognizant of all these amal. Likewise, when Nabi Alaihi went to a place and he feared um, ambush, إِذَا خَوْفَ قَوْمًا He would read as well, Allah ma'ina naj'aluka fi nuhurim wa na'udhu bika min shururihim. For protection, likewise, when you 
disembark and you go to your residence and you want protection there as well from all the unseen creatures and other harms أَوْذُوا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ تَمَّاتِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ Nothing will harm you when you are at that place as well. So uh, these are different amal that we have been encouraged. We, we need to learn these amal, practice it and bring it into our lives. The amal for today is the narration was Ali radiallahu anhu when Abayla Islam used to recite the following dua when he intended to travel. Allahumma bika asulu wa bika ahulu wa bika asir. O oh Allah, with your assistance do I attack the enemy, with your assistance do I abstain from evil, and with your assistance do I travel. And the reward with man radiallahu anhu when Nabi Islam would leave home and intend to travel. Amen to billahi, i'tasam to billahi, tawakkal to Allah, la hawla wa la quwata. Illa billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one and all and give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.